Hi, my name is Bart Paulson, and in this uh, tutorial, I'm going to show how to deal with outliers or extreme scores in StatCrunch. I'm, uh, specifically, I'm going to cover two different ways. One is uh, simple exclusion or deletion, and the other one is with the logarithmic transformation. Um, now, I'm going to use a data set that's in uh, StatCrunch. It's called Responses to the Social Networking Survey. If you go to uh, Explore Data, and search for Facebook, this one will come up. It'll be the top one. Anyhow, in this one, we have data from a whole bunch of people. Let's see how many. We've got data from about, you know, a little over 200 people, and we have their gender, their age, what uh, social networking site they access most frequently, their primary site, uh, Facebook, MySpace, Twitter, and so on, and how many times in one week that they access uh, that site. So anyhow, um, one of the variables in here uh, has some serious issues with outliers, and it's this one right here. It's times. And I'll show you that by making first a histogram of times. And let's see here. Uh, normally I would do a title. I'm just going to hit create graph. And you can see that right here we have this huge bar that has nearly everybody. And it goes from zero times per week to 100 times per week. And then we've got just a tiny bit of people over 100. And then we've got somebody way up here in the 700s. And this, of course, is not a distribution that you would want to be working with. Um, I'll show you another way to deal with this distribution, to look at it. And that is with a box plot, because that helps identify outliers. So I'm going to do that one, but when you use box plots in StatCrunch, you absolutely positively must go to the next page to say use fences to identify outliers. I also like to draw them horizontally, but that's optional. I'll press create graph. And there you can see I got this tiny little box plot squished way down here with all these outliers, including one way up here to 700. Uh, needless to say, this is a problem because most of the statistics that we would use, things like the mean and the standard deviation and correlation and regression, assume that you're dealing with a nice smooth bell curve, and outliers are one of the worst things that can happen in a distribution. Now, I'm going to show you two ways of dealing with this. Uh, number one is we can simply exclude all of the outlying scores. And I'm going to do this in a uh, slightly iterative process. Um, by the way, I'm going to bring up the other chart also. So I have both the histogram and the box plot right here. But I'm just going to modify the box plot for right now. By clicking on Options and Edit, I come back to the dialog box. And if I back up, I can use this statement right here that says where. And I type in times. And let's start by getting it down to 100. So times has to be less than 100. That means they have to access their site less than 100 times per week. And press create graph. Okay, it's better, but I still have a lot of outliers. Uh, in fact, let me come down. Let me cut these ones off. This is this is getting a little better right here. So I'm going to do the edit again, and I think I'll do it at 25. And look, I've still got some outliers up here at 20. By the way, the whiskers are moving because I'm eliminating a number of scores, and that's changing the quartiles a little bit. I'm going to do one more exclusion, modify it one more time down to 20. So only look at people who've done it less than 20 times. Finally, I have a very reasonable uh, box plot. If I do a similar thing over here, and I back up and I do where times, uh, by the way, uh, capitalization matters with variables. you got to capitalize it exactly the same way. And then... I have a much better box plot here. It's you know it's skewed, but it's nothing like it was before. Now, if you do this, you can go ahead and you can uh, do your analyses. However, there is an issue, and that is, I've deleted a lot of scores um, because I've done this before. I've we started with 171. I've deleted 28 scores, or 16% of the sample. Now, sometimes you can deal with that. We still have a reasonably large sample size, but you don't really want to lose that much data, especially because there are other ways to deal with it that maintain the data. So what I'm going to do now, so I'll just move these up here. 
And I'm going to show another way. And this one's called a transformation. Um, well, let me just show how it works. I come over here to data to transform data. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this one variable times. And because I have outliers on the high end, I'm going to use something called the logarithmic transformation. Now, it's logarithms. And what it does is it to calculate a logarithm for each number, it takes uh, a base number, you, uh, it can be 10 or it can be what's called E or the base for the natural logarithm, which is about 2.71828, blah, blah, blah. And then it finds out what exponent you have to use to get the, uh, the number in question. And then that number, the exponent, is the logarithm. And what it does is it brings, it gives high numbers much smaller numbers and can bring things in. Let me show you how it works. This gets a little complicated here, but I'm going to say the variable that I am dealing with is this one, times. And I want the logarithm of it. So I just click that one right there. Um, I like the natural logarithm better, but the, the two function identically. Uh, they accomplish the same thing. Uh, this is if I had a second variable. You know, if you come down here, I can have more complicated expressions. And this is where I could put in constants if I wanted. I'm not dealing with them. I just want the logarithm of y, which is times I press set expression. And you see, there it is, right there. Logarithm, natural log, that's ln. And then in parentheses, of the variable times that it puts in uh, quotation marks. I press compute, and I get a little dialog box that says it's added in a new column to the data table, and here it is, ln for natural log of times. And you see how the numbers, they go from zero, zero gives you, a, is for the score of one. If they put zero originally, it, you can't do a logarithm. That's So we're going to lose a little bit of data from people who don't access the sites at all per week. Then again, if we want to limit ourselves to people who actually do access the sites, this is a reasonable thing. But you take some of the large numbers, like this 15, you see it becomes much smaller, 2.7, whereas uh, the score of 4 becomes 1.3. So they're a lot closer. Anyhow, watch what happens if I do the, um, the histogram of log times. This is with all of the scores in it, including the person who accessed sites over 700 times a week, which, by the way, corresponds to every 10 minutes during the 16 waking hours every day for seven days a week. So, anyhow, somebody's got to find something better to do. But please note, it's not a horrible distribution. It's skewed, but it's not, you know, pathological. And I'll show you another one where I just get a box plot. And I'm going to get for log times, I'm going to make sure that I have the fences and I've drawn it horizontally. And I press create graph. And check it out. This part right here in the middle is almost perfectly symmetrical up to here. I do have two outliers, but there's only two out of 171 scores. It's not horrible. If I want to, I could exclude those ones. I'm going to bring up all four charts now. Two, three, four. There we go. So you can, can compare them. Here's the histogram with an exclusion. Here's the box plot with an exclusion. Here's the... Uh, histogram with everybody using the logarithm scores. This is the box plot with everybody using the logarithm scores. Let me just emphasize the difference here by removing this exclusion statement. There's the original box plot and I'm going to remove that statement too. And look, this is with everybody in the data and this is with everybody in the data. It became a much more usable distribution over here and over here. Now the transformation I use, the logarithms, is good for when the outliers are on the high end. If you have outliers on the low end, then something like squaring the scores, which would push the, high, the higher numbers out much further, would be a good choice. But anyhow, what this does is it gives you a way of helping meet some of the assumptions or prerequisites for the statistical procedures that you use and make better use of your data. Hope that helps.